Good morning, and welcome to the Morning Market Call. I'm Dustin Schick, and with me today is one of our finest MBA students, Jack Schertz. And Jack Schertz, he's had quite a bit of uh, experience in China with its culture and language, having lived there. Uh, Jack, we really appreciate you coming out today. Thanks for the opportunity. And can you tell us a little bit about your experience as it, re as it relates to China? Certainly. I, uh, I speak Mandarin Chinese, and I, as you mentioned, I spent a little bit of time living in China. Uh, I've been involved with some business projects there. And this coming uh, school year, I'll be the president of the BYU China Business Club. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, we wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Google and its recent operations in China, decisions that it's made. Um, you know, they, had, they set up operations a couple years ago and then have recently made some decisions to kind of pull back on some of that. Can you tell us what's happening there? Sure, it's an interesting situation. That Google entered China in 2006, as you mentioned, but just this last January, they came with announcement that, uh, that they may be, that they will stop censoring uh, the, the emails, the searches, that, that censoring that's required by the Chinese government. Mm. Uh, of course, there's a little bit of a, a backlash from the Chinese government, a breach of agreement, breach of breach of law, really. Uh, and then in March, uh, March 22nd, Google did make that move. They pulled out their, their China operation, at least their, their .cn domain. So why are they doing that? I mean, what's the purpose of this? Uh, why is China doing what it's doing? Why is Google reacting in the way that it is? It's an interesting question. Uh, you know, as far as Google's strategy, no one can really be sure whether there's, uh, there are deeper things motivating this decision other than, uh, than just personal principle on the part of the executives. Uh, there may be some, some deeper motivations, but no one can quite be sure. As far as the Chinese government, uh, you know, consider, consider the fact that, that China has been under communist rule for more than 60 years now. Yeah. It, it's an issue of, of privacy. It's an issue of, of security violation from Google's standpoint. But for, the, for Chinese nationals, they're pretty accustomed to the way that things are done in China. So are there, are there other cultural or political factors? Because if, if that's so embedded in, in the way of life over there, then you know, it's probably pretty normal for them. But are there other cultural or political factors that we should maybe think about or consider? Well, uh, you have the fact that over the, the past couple of months, when this announcement was, way, was made, the, the National People's Congress in China was in session. So the timing of, of this move by Google could have been very strategic, trying to, to make some differences <laughs> for the entire multinational enterprise community oh, that's interesting. within China. And so how, will this, how do you think this will affect other uh, multinational companies, corporations that, are, that are, have operations there in China? Well, it's important to remember that, chi that Google doesn't speak for all of the United States companies or, or other foreign companies within China, but they have such a powerful voice that they may be seen as, as speaking for those companies. Right. Uh, so it can have some big implications. Uh, shortly after Google's final decision of, of what they were going to do with, with their .cn, uh, another very prominent company, GoDaddy.com, uh, made a similar decision that they would stop issuing those, those .cn domains. So we're already seeing companies make hmm. follow-up decisions on, on what Google has done. And it's just, just fascinating to me because, you know, China is seen as one of these really developing markets and, and uh, especially as far as internet users and ability to really drive revenues there. It's interesting, intriguing to me that they would decide to do that. It, it is an interesting thing. And, and considering, though, that uh, that China is not a, a capitalist free market. It, it's a, a socialist market economy. Uh, so the whole interplay between the two government systems and, and how the, the market equates within those systems is an interesting thing to consider. Anything else moving forward that we should uh, take into consideration regarding this? I would just watch for other companies and the decisions that they're making as they receive increasing pressure from the Chinese government. Uh, there are different provisions, restrictions that may come about from, from China upon these companies that may make them make some, from, some very different strategic decisions going forward. Well, it's, it's certainly a, a fascinating uh, thing to watch, and we'll be definitely looking to that in the future. Appreciate you coming out here today, Jack, and, and appreciate you for watching. Thank you. The Morning Market Call is a production of the Marriott School of Management at Brigham Young University and is made possible by generous donations from Larry Kashjian and Gary Williams. This webcast was produced by Greg Lee, Tim Hart, Julie Kellett, and Jonathan Marucci.